tonight. Thank y'all for watching and tuning in. You might see the camera shake a little bit. Uh, for those of y'all online, they got the tech person in. <laughs> All right. So tonight we are in Proverbs. We would have started a new book, but we only had one lesson in Proverbs last week. And so I wanted to do at least one more for the book of Proverbs. And, and next Wednesday we'll be over into Ecclesiastes. I'm thinking I'm going to do one in Ecclesiastes and one in Song of Solomon since those books are kind of short. And then in December, we're going to roll into Isaiah. But tonight, we are in Proverbs in the 17th chapter, 17th chapter of Proverbs. And I'm going to read just a couple of verses tonight, and then we can pull out a lot of those things, uh, some things from these three verses. Um, and, it, and I'm going to start at verse number one. Proverbs chapter 17, verse number one. I'm reading out of the New King James Version. All right. And it reads, better is a dry morsel with quietness than a house full of feasting with strife. A wise servant will rule over a son who causes shame and will share an inheritance among the brothers. The refining pot is for silver and the furnace for gold. But the Lord tests the hearts. Can you say amen? amen? All right. We only read three verses and I don't really have a topic, but I'm going to give you just a couple of things for your productivity. All right. And that's what the Bible study is there for. The Bible study helps you to implement your faith, to understand um, not just what you read, but how to implement that. And so tonight I, I got three things for you. I may give you a couple more, but I got for sure three things to help you to progress your faith tonight, okay? And so tonight, I want to start by saying this. I want to start by saying that Proverbs, one of the things that Proverbs does is it teaches you what to value and what not to value. It teaches you things of value. And it becomes important, especially for the Christian, because what I find a lot of, especially nowadays, is we put the value on the wrong thing. And it's amazing to me, right? It's really amazing. I'm glad you got your pins tonight because I got a couple things I want you to write. But it's amazing to me how the things that are, that actually have no value, we put so much value on and the things that are of the most value because they are free, we put less value on. And so when I read Proverbs, Proverbs gives us wisdom. And one of the things that it does in giving us wisdom is it shows us what things are most important in our lives. And so tonight, I want you to understand this tonight, that Proverbs teaches you what things to value, what things you want to have in your life, and what things that are more important or less important in your life. And so that's one of the things that we can learn from Proverbs. It teaches you what things to value. Immediately in the first verse of chapter 17, it begins talking about better is a dry morsel with quietness than a house full of feasting with strife. What that says to me is it's better to have peace with little than to have fussing and frustration with a lot. <laughs> what it's designed to do is designed to highlight having peace in your life. And that's what I, that's our number one tonight. Peace. Just write down peace. I will have peace in my life. Peace is the most important thing. Having peace is more important than having possessions. He says having peace in your life is better than having material possessions. And it intends to make the reader pay attention to how significant peace is in your life. Here's my question for you tonight. Would you rather have peace without possessions or would you rather have possessions without peace? I want you to ask yourself that question. If I could make you a millionaire right now, and you have to, you either choose having a million dollars or having peace, which one would you choose tonight? If you had a million dollars, if I could give you a million dollars and you would never have peace as long as you had a million dollars, or if I was to give you peace 
and, and you not have the million dollars, which one would you choose? And I love questions like that because when I was young, I did not put so much value on having peace. And so I welcomed things or I chased after things that I thought would bring me peace. And I'm sure some of us, some of you have probably made the same mistake. You chased after a relationship that you thought that you would, you know, bring you peace. You felt like a certain amount of money in the bank would give you a certain amount of peace. You felt like having a certain thing or being in a certain place or going to a certain place would give you peace. But the thing about peace is, is that anything you get without peace is not beneficial. I want you to consider that going on a vacation, the most lavish vacation that you could think of. And the whole idea of going on vacation is to what? Get yourself a peace of mind away from everything. But consider that you on vacation, you on the boat, you fly, you, you in Dubai, you in where Jamaica, wherever that Hawaii, wherever you want to go. You in the perfect place, but you have no peace. I want you to consider that. That anything you have absent of peace is actually not beneficial in your life. If you was to read the story of Saul, Saul is the king of all Israel. He has as many women as he wants to have, all the money that he wants to have, and his begging columns, whatever food that he wants. But in the story of Saul, it says that he has no peace and he is restless. He can't sleep at night. He can't focus his mind. He can't do anything because he does not have peace. And this is why I like certain things like that, especially in Proverbs, because it shows you the value of simple things like peace. And sometimes it takes maturity. It takes experiences. It takes you getting exactly what it is that you wanted to get absent of peace for you to recognize. To have the perfect this without peace, it really means nothing. And I know I'm not the only one. I thought I wanted this certain person in my life, and then I get this certain person in my life, and there was no peace in the relationship. And then the question became, is it better to have the person, or is it better to have my peace? And a lot of times what we do is we switch the two. In reality, to have anything without having peace is actually not of benefit. Sometimes people act as though having more money brings more peace, but in reality, having more money, it does it does come with more, but it comes with more headache. You don't recognize having more money, you gotta pay more taxes. You have more people that want some of your money. You have more issues. More often comes along with more. More people trying to take your money. More people asking for your money. More people begging for your money. More people saying you acting funny because you got money. I want you to get it. And so tonight I want you to consider that sometimes the things that you want, that you are expecting to give you peace, actually don't have don't have peace along with them. Uh, I notice a lot of people, they want to be famous, but they don't recognize more fame brings more scrutiny. More fame brings more outside opinions. More fame brings more criticism, more public opinion. You don't recognize that sometimes the things that you think that you want is going to bring you so much peace actually give you the opposite. And that's what I want to highlight tonight. He says having a dry morsel with quietness is better than having a house full of food but with contention. Get that. In the first ver- in the first part of that verse, it don't say where they live. It just says having a, dr- a, a burnt bread with peace and quietness is better than being in a big house with a lot of food but having a whole lot of contention. I don't know about you, but having a life filled with turmoil and chaos or living with a person that, that just is, is completely uh, uh, critical or, or, or contentious or always want to argue or always got an attitude, it makes you appreciate just having a small room in the house with the door shut because in the room is what? Peace is peace. It's peace. I want to ask you a question tonight. I want to ask you a question. What have you traded for your peace? What have you traded for your peace? Some people don't recognize this, but sometimes you can trade your peace in order to get a certain thing. And I didn't realize that. I didn't realize by I wanted a certain girl in my life, right? But by getting this girl, I traded my peace. Are you getting that? And there were times that I wanted money, right? And going after money, I got the money, but it cost me my peace. My question to you tonight is, what 
have you traded your peace in order to get? What have you traded? You get the thing and God lets you get the thing. Yeah. But in getting the thing, you recognize yeah. that you lose your peace. Yeah. What have you traded for your peace? This is what I want you to write. I want you to write tonight, peace is the priority. My peace is my priority. I want you to get that tonight. That your peace should be your priority. And anything that you have to trade your peace for is not worth it. That peace needs to be your priority. Yeah. What have you traded for your peace? Here's another one. What are you willing to give up in order to have peace? Oh. I want you to consider that tonight. What? Are you willing to give up in order to have peace? I talk to so many young people in these relationships. Lord, help us with these relationships. And they don't recognize that the reason why you're so frustrated, the reason why you're so agitated and annoyed, it's because you have a person that's chaotic, yeah. that does not bring peace into your life. And my question is, are you willing to give up? That's what I asked a young lady. Are you willing to give up that man and so that you can have peace? Are you willing to give up those extra hundred thousands of dollars yeah. so you can have a little bit more peace? Yeah. Are you willing to lose some space at your house so you can have a little bit more peace? I want you to consider that. Are you willing to trade down with the car that you have in order to have a peace that people ain't blowing, uh, uh, blowing your phone up about the car note that you can't afford because you just want to have more? Are you willing to give up some things in order to get or have your Peace. I, I want you to consider this tonight. Make peace the priority. Uh, have you traded away? And this point, this verse also points out one. Of, this is one of the things I like. It points out the importance of choosing partnerships of peace. Yeah. I want you to get that partnerships of peace. I want you to get this. That peace needs to be priority. If you are in a relationship tonight, you got a boyfriend, a girlfriend, a boo thing, a sweetheart, a baby daddy, baby mama. Peace needs to be the priority. And that means sometimes you're going to have to compromise, not because I want to do everything your way or because I want you to do everything my way, but because I want to have a relationship of peace. I want y'all to get that. That you have to find partnerships of peace peace. And this yeah. is why it's good for you to find out who you got before you connect yourself to them. And I'm talking about friends. I'm talking about business associates, especially boyfriends and girlfriends. Are you, do you have partnerships of peace? And I want you to get this, just like I said last week. You'll be surprised by connecting with a chaotic person, your life will end up in a whole bunch of chaos. And the question tonight is, uh, what have you traded in place of your peace? Do you have partnerships of peace? Yeah. Understand this before we move to the next one. Life is going to bring you problems. Life by itself is going to bring you adversity. Right. It's going to bring you challenges. You don't need another person in your life to bring more problems and more. What you want to have in your life is a person who is going to help you find some peace. That's what he said. Better is a little bit with quietness in the house. We can get along. How can two walk together except they agree? We can get along. We can speak nice to each other. We can enjoy each other's company. It's better to have a person of, with peace, a partnership of peace with a little bit than it is to have a whole lot with a whole lot of arguing and a whole lot of fussing and a whole lot of, and I just want you to consider that tonight because it's sad to be saved and love God and to be having this great connection with God but to be going home to a home of turmoil, to a home of chaos, to a home of fighting and fussing and cussing and throwing stuff and breaking glass. It don't make no sense. You got to make peace your priority. Yeah. If it costs you your peace, it costs you too much. Yeah. I'm going to say that again. If it costs you your peace, it costs you too much. And you got to decide. You got to make peace your priority. If it don't come with peace, I don't want it. Yes, she fine, but if she don't come with peace, don't get her. If, yes, he looks good. He talk good. He got a lot of money. But if it don't come with peace, don't hook yourself up to it. You got to let it go. You got to let it go. Make peace the priority in your 
life. Make peace a priority in your home. Make peace a priority in your relationship. Make peace a priority at your job. Yes. If you stressed out when you come home, you might need to start looking for another job. Life is hard enough already. I want to surround myself with things that bring me peace. I want you to hear me tonight. All right, and so and so that's number one. That's number one. That's number one. Peace. The second verse. A wise servant will rule over a son that causes shame and will share an inheritance among brothers. I want you to notice the difference in relationship. A servant works for the house. A servant works for the family. Yeah. A son belongs to the family. What's the difference here? This is why we can only do three. Uh, this is why we can, we can only do three because it's so different, right? It talks about peace in the first verse. Yeah. The second verse, the difference in the binding factor is in the action. Get it? The son displays actions that cause shame. Yeah. The servant displays actions that show wisdom. And in the end, in verse number two, the wisdom of a servant brings him to have power over a son. Are y'all getting that? Somebody who works for the house ends up having power over someone who the house belongs to. How? The defining factor is in the actions. In the end, the wisdom of the servant brings him to have power over the son. The servant's wisdom distinguishes him. That's what I want to get. The wisdom here can be translated to this word prudence. I want you to write that word down. Prudence. And look it up in the dictionary when you get home. What it means is acting with or showing care and thought for the future. Prudence, that one word. First is peace, right? Then it's prudence, prudence. It is acting with or showing care and thought for the future. In other words, what it says about this servant is, he knows how to use his resources. I want you to get this tonight. He knows how to use his resources to be productive while the son uses his resources to bring shame. Yeah. Get that, that the servant works with thought and intention and ultimately his prudence brings him to have rule over the son while the son occupies his time with shameful practices, actions. Now, I want you to get it. So if prudence is actions with care and thought about the future, then evidently the son had actions without showing care and thought for the future. And why is that important? It's important because many people live their lives without intention, without intention. Here's my question for you tonight. This is prudence. Are you running through your present resources without considering the effects it will have on your future? I'm gonna say that again. Are you burning through the resources that you have without recognizing the effects that it have on your future? Let me marketize that. The things that you do today will have an effect on how it turns out tomorrow. Yeah. And if you are not moving with intention today, it's a good chance that your life will be in chaos tomorrow. And now that's what I want to stress about that tonight. This word prudence is living with the understanding that your actions today will affect your outcomes tomorrow. And here's the question, out of all of the money that you made, how much of it have you been able to keep? You only get one body. How are you treating your one body? You got one, I told my son this the other day, I said, sir, if I was to tell you, you can have whatever car you wanted, however much it costs, you can get this car, I'll buy it for you, and it'll be yours for the rest of your life. He said, man, I would go and get the best one, and I said, here's the catch, this is the only car you will ever have for the rest of your life. How do you think you would take care of it? He said, I would take care of it like no other, knowing that I'm going to be 90 with the same car. And I said to him, son, you only got one body, and you need to be careful how, come on, I want you to get it. When, I start, when you start talking about prudence, and I want to go natural to the natural resources, right? You have time, you have health. Right? Those are the main two, and you have money. I, and here's my question. My question is, have you considered that what you do today has an effect on what happens tomorrow? And it goes like this. It goes like this. Either you're going to pay on the front side, or you're going to pay on the back side. Either you're going to pay in discipline on the front to try to control your outcomes, or you're going to pay in consequence on the back because you didn't exercise. Come on, discipline. Here's what I want you to say tonight. Prudence. Prudence. Yeah. Practice prudence. In other words, what I'm saying to you 
is you have to be intentional about the things you do in your life. It's so sad to me that you have access to a God who has access to blessings, who can open up a door and create opportunities, and he can't even trust you to take care of your body. Get this. This is what the Bible says. I didn't say it. I'm just quoting what the Bible says. That your body is the temple. And most people only use that for those that smoke and those that drink. I'm take forget the smokers and drinkers. What about those people that don't treat their body right? Yeah. What about those people that don't take care of their body? They, you're not exercising. You're not doing that. What about those people? What about you? When I say your body is the temple, what about the people that smoke cigarettes? What about, I want you to get it tonight. What have you done when I say prudence? Are you thinking about the tomorrow's effects of what you do in yeah, your yeah, body yeah. today? Are you thinking about the tomorrow effects of what you do with your money today? Are you thinking about it? When I say prudence, I want you to consider that you have a limited amount of time on the earth. How are you spending your time? I want you to get that tonight. When I say prudence, I want you to consider that this servant it's what it says about the servant is he was intentional in his actions. He didn't just go through the motions, but he was thoughtful with intention. And I want you to consider this, and this goes into what we're going to be in in January. But have, what was your goal or your intention at the beginning of the year, and have you hit that goal? Have you been intentional with your actions, with your behavior, with your time, with your investments? Have you been prudent with the resources? Here's what, here's what I want to ask you. What are you doing with it? What are you doing with it? What are you doing with it? You are the most valuable resource you will ever have. And most of us, we don't do nothing but watch TV all day, not recognizing that you can, you can, you can improve your IQ. You can read and learn a little bit more. I want you to get that tonight. That yeah. look, maybe you'll get sick, maybe you won't. But if you exercise, at least you're giving your body something to fight with. Yeah. And I'm not criticizing nobody. I just want you to consider that a life that is a life of prudence that you got to consider that God gives you control over certain things and if you don't exercise prudence it's a good chance that you will not be able to control the consequence come on on the other side either it's going to hurt now or it's going to hurt later and I tell people this all the time I say yes you I, I know it, it tastes good I know it's, it feel good I know and you laughing at me because I don't engage in it and I ain't knocking you but on the other side I want you to get it and a lot of my friends now they starting to gain a little bit of weight now they running out of air now they can't go up too many flights of steps now and while you on the decline I'm on the incline why because I'm acting with prudence while everybody else spending their money partying and going out and I'm saving mine and I'm investing mine right no I can't go out tonight no I can't club I don't do all that no I can't go by this no I don't have Jordans every time they come out but it's because I'm exercising prudence and on the other side when you feeling the pain I'm gonna be enjoying the blessing I want you to get it because I exercised prudence I want you to write that practice prudence get that tonight move with intention. It is simply this. Do a present action with a future result in mind. Do a present action with a future result in mind. That's all that faith is. Faith is doing a present action with a future result in mind. So when I say I have faith in God, I'm doing actions today in hope and belief that God is going to bring me an outcome tomorrow. That's what faith is. That's why I control my body. That's why I control my tongue. That's why I discipline my life. It's actions today in hopes that God is going to create an outcome. Come on, tomorrow. Yeah. That's what faith is. In, in other words, this is what he's saying. Prudence. All right, I got to move because I ain't got that much time. And so now when we get to verse number three, the refining pot is for silver and the furnace for gold, but the Lord tests the hearts. When I looked up this, this, these different things, what it talks about is, it is purifying silver and purifying gold. The last one I want to talk about is purification. What it's saying here is God's drastic testing of human character is not destructive in intent. I believe it gives perspective as to how you should see the difficult transitions in your life. Yeah. Get this, that God is going to always send you through testing to purify you. 
to purge you and to prove you. Get this tonight. If the, this is my number three. Process. I want you to say that. Process. Process. God inspects and then removes the parts of your inner being that are not productive. He does this by way of process. I want you to get this tonight. Get this. Every person, well, most of the people in the Bible did not go from the promise of God stepping right into it being their present, but they had years of progress. Moses had 40 years in one place, 40 years in another place before he even got to the purpose and the plan of God. But the 80 years before he got to the purpose, he had to endure the process. Get this tonight, that God is always going to send you through to purify you, to purge you, and to prove you. What is he doing? When it says the refining pot, when it says the furnace, what it does is you put the metal in there and all the impurities burn up so you can have a pure silver or you can yeah. have a pure gold. And here's the thing. The thing is, is that it's difficult when God sends you through the fire. But you don't recognize that the fire is designed to burn out the impurities so that the best of the best rise to the top. Yeah. And this is what I want you to consider tonight as we go in off that God has you in what I like to call the purging process, the pruning process, and the proving process. Well, he will send you through a difficult situation, and this is designed to let you see and understand that God's intent for allowing things to happen in your life is so that God can remove some things. He sends you through fire to burn out those habits, to burn off those characteristics that are detrimental to your future. Yeah. Get this, it becomes important that you don't resist the process, but let God show you your areas of improvement. The number three tonight is process. Don't rush the process, trust the process. Don't resist the process, trust the process. When I say process, what I mean is, and this is why I like that, is a great analogy, refining pot refining pot and the furnace. It is an intensely hot situation. Have you ever been in that in your life? Have you ever been in that intense hot situation and you question God, why am I going through this? Or why am I going through that? What is the purpose? I want you to understand tonight is giving you a, 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 a perspective on how to see the difficult transitions in your life and it is God sending you through process and I want you to get this yeah. here's a difficult thing that you may have never heard in church is that when you don't get it the first time that you got to go through the process again and when yeah. you don't get it that time he'll send you through the process again because there are some things that were supposed to be burned up the first time but you were stubborn so now God I gotta send you right back there was some things that were supposed to be destroyed the first time but you were stuck in your way so God gotta send you yeah. back through the same process processes again. I want you to get this. Trust the process. Yeah. While you're enduring it, thank you. It is to let God in and let God work on your inner man. That's what he wants. I want you to understand this, that the most valuable thing in the earth is you. It is me. It is yeah. the people. Not the possessions, not the material stuff, not the money, but you are the most valuable thing to God yeah, and yeah, God yeah. oftentimes will do whatever he's got to do to burn out those bad habits and bad characteristics so that the best parts of you can rise to the top and be useful yeah. I want you to get that while you're going through it understand that it does not have a detrimental intent but it's designed to bring out the best in you yeah. I want you to say that tonight it's bringing out the best in me it hurts but it's bringing out the best in me. It's frustrating, but it's bringing out the best in me. And start praying this prayer. God, where do you want to work yeah. in me? I can't promise you it's going to be overnight. But God, where do you want to work? Yeah. If I'm in a frustrated situation, where are you trying to work? Don't resist the process. Trust the process. And allow God the freedom to work on the inside of you. Yeah. And when I say process, not with complaining. Not being stubborn. 
not being angry, not being mean while you go through the process, oh. not turning to bad habits while you go through the process, not going back to those old ways while you're going through the process, but allowing God the opportunity to come in and process some things into you while he's processing some things, come on, out of you. And here's what I'm going to say tonight before I close. I want you to consider this, that it's, it's, it, it, it's shameful for a person to go through a difficult situation and come out the same way. That was not God's intention. He intended for you to go in one way so you could come out a different way. It, but you didn't allow God to do his work. And I want you to get this, that God, he's such a God. He's so kind. He's so loving. He's so sweet. He's not going to intrude in your heart. Behold, I stand at the door and knock and whosoever will, come on, let me in. Whoever will open the door, then will I come in and sup with him. In other words, he's saying, I'm standing there, I'm telling you, Marcus, your attitude bad, Marcus, your temper bad, but I'm not going to move it until you open the door and say, alright, God, come help me with my attitude. Marcus, you got too much lust on the inside of you, but I'm not going to move it until you give me permission. That's what I say. Process. Trust the process. Give God permission to come in. Ask God to show you, God, what do I need to let go of? What do I need to put down? What do I need to pick up? What do I need to change? When I say process tonight, I want you to understand that God has you in the process, not focusing on the pain, but seeing what the pain is there to produce. I want you to get that, yeah. that God never sends you through pain for no reason. And if he allowed it, he allowed it as a process for your purpose. Yeah. And this is why I love verse number three. It lets me know that the pains in my life, the frustrations in my life, the sad points in my life, the disappointments in my life are all to be used by God to make me better. Come on, let's give God a hand of praise tonight. The three P's for Christian productivity. That's the topic of the lesson. The three P's for Christian productivity. So that's all I got for you tonight. Thank you guys who are online. Thank you for watching. Thank you guys for coming out tonight. It's always such a blessing to see your faces. I kind of went over my time a little bit tonight, but I think that was a really, really, really good lesson. So with you guys tonight that are online, uh, if you want to join, if you want to give God your heart, you can do that right where you are. You can just tell God, God, I want to change my life. I want you to come into my heart. I do believe that you raised Jesus from the dead, and, and, and I want you to change my life. I, 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 want, I want to do some things different. You can do it right from where you are. Our church is here to help your faith grow. Yeah. Our church is here to help you get closer to God. Our church is here to help you understand what you read in the Bible. Yeah. Our church is here to help you be able to implement the lessons that you read in the Bible so that it becomes plain to you and you can see God more clearly. You can hear God more clearly. Amen. So with that, visit our website www.thegodmovement.com yeah. and if you want to get closer to God, that is your opportunity online. Thank you guys for watching tonight. Thank you guys for watching. Thank y'all for coming tonight. Give yourself one more hand. Alright, and we are going offline. So good night. I will see you guys next Wednesday.